standard equations that we work with in chapter 10. Maturity value, remember that we also call that future value. And in fact, most of the time in the rest of the chapters, that's what we'll call it is future value. That's kind of why I like to use the phrase future value here in the beginning. But the book does like to use the term maturity value, which is fine either way. And then don't forget that I equals PRT. So first question, I borrow 50 grand at 4.5% from October 10th until February 20th. How much interest? How am I going to do this one? Got to use the calendar. All right, so start with the good stuff, though, right? Tell me that the principal is 50000 Tell me that the rate's 4.5%. And please be able to convert that to a percentage correctly. 0 0.045. Don't tell me it's 0.45. That's 45%. And then last but not least, how much time? So... Hopefully you all went to your Julian calendars. I brought a few extra of these if you guys need them. If you do not have the booklet, grab one. Monroe, folks, I posted the PDF file for the business math handbook thing. So you guys can crank it up. I realize that it's like 46 pages of stuff. So I think I have copies of this somewhere in Monroe. I just don't remember where. So if you ask the front desk, see if they have copies of this, you may be able to get one without having to print it out, but otherwise, just grab one, grab a copy of it some, some way. So for now, though, when you look up October 10th, what number is it? 283. 283 or 284? 283. 2 Three is what it looks like to me. Is that what everybody else saw, 283? Note, straight edge, not a bad idea to have, just so that you can make sure you're running across straight. And February 20th, what number is that? 51, because it's 31 days in January, and plus 20 gives you 51. Or just look at the calendar. Or just look at the calendar. Yeah. All right, now, how are we going to figure out how much time there are between the 283rd day of one year and the 51st day of another year? Take 365 and minus 283. All right, good. And then we add 51. So figure out how many days there were in 2011. So take 365 minus 283. How many days in 2011? 82. 82 days. And then how many days in 2012? 51. 51 days. Luckily, we didn't make it to March. <laughs> and so how many days did we actually borrow that money for? 133. 133 days. And what do we have to do with that, folks? Put it over 365, right? Remember that you have to convert it to years. Note, it doesn't say ordinary. Therefore, use exact number of days. That's 365. And now you can just use good old I equals PRT, right? So I is going to be 50,000 times 0 0.045 times this awesome fraction, 133 over 3. And you punch that out, what do you get? 86 cents. Rounding correctly? Good. All right. Is that what everybody else got? Ah, cool. So, I party. Nice. All right, so how do we do the next one? Paid 20 bucks of interest on a $2,000 loan over three months. What was my interest rate? <coughs> hmm? Same formula. Same formula, basically, right? But what am I trying to solve for this time? Or 
your R. So R is going to be the interest divided by the principal times the time. How much interest did I pay? 20 bucks. What was my principal? 2,000. And how much time went by? Three over 12, right, because it's three over 12 years, right? So just make sure that you convert when you go to put things into your formula. And then you can just turn the crank again. And again, be careful. Remember that the rate always comes back as a decimal, right? So when you punch this in, what'd you get? 0 0.04. That's the decimal. How do you convert that to a percent? times by 100, so what is this going to be? My interest rate was 4%, okay? So, be able to calculate interest rates. We'll do another one, just to be safe. Oh, I like this problem. How many days did I borrow $400 at 10%? My interest was $83.33 using ordinary interest. T equals 83.33. Well, that, let's get the formula first, just to be safe, right? So remember that to get T by itself from I equals PRT, you got to divide by the PR. So now, sorry, I'm going to keep going. 83.33 over. 400 over 0.1. Awesome. And so what do you get from that? 2.08325. Yes. Okay. What are the units for that number? Years, right? Remember that time in these formulas always is in years. So when you're, you're using a formula to get time, this is going to be years. Well, I didn't ask for years. Turn it into days. How do we turn that into days? Hmm? Multiply by 360. Why not divide? That's just how it works. <laughs> That's just how it works, right. Going from days to years, you divide by 360. But going from years to days, you're going to multiply by 360. Note, folks, if you had punched into your calculator 2.08325 and divided by 360, you would have gotten a ridiculous number. And hopefully you've looked at that and said, um, I know that there's more than 0. .00006 days in two years, right? I mean, that's just silly. And so you say, oh yeah, I was supposed to multiply. So when you multiply, what did you get? 749.97. So what are we going to round it to? All right, good. I didn't officially tell you to round to the nearest day, but more than likely that's what you're going to do. And it's close enough anyways that 750 days is essentially the correct answer that you're looking for. I hopefully, in a, on a test situation, would tell you round to the nearest day or the nearest tenth of a day or whatever. In this problem, I was being obtuse a little bit, sorry. But again, good problem. Don't forget how to go back and forth between days and years, months and years, both directions, right? Sometimes you divide, sometimes you multiply, be able to keep track of which one's which. And if you accidentally go the wrong way, at least think about your answer a little bit and then go, oh crap, if I went the wrong way, the number is going to be ridiculous. So make sure that you fix it, all right? All right. So I paid 
ten dollars and twenty cents in interest on a loan at five percent for two months. How much did I borrow? What am I asking for this time? Principal. And what's the formula for principal? Again, wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea to have all of those formulas, although you can generate them from I equals PRT yourself. You might want to write it down on your note card if you wish. So, how do I apply this formula, folks? Interest? Dollars and one cents. What's my rate? Okay, be careful with that one, right? 5%.05. And my time, 2 over 12, good, because you convert your months into years by using that fraction to 12. And again, folks, please do not try and take 2 divided by 12 and get a decimal and try to put that in your calculator. That is just dangerous to try and do. Learn how to put this literally in your calculator, right, with the fraction button to get 2 twelfths in there. So when you punch that all out, what do you want to get? And it's not, there's no pennies, right? It's straight up $1,224. If you try and round this number down here to a percentage or to a decimal somehow, there's a good chance that you're not going to get exactly 1224 If you use the fraction, you will. All right? So again, just me trying to sell you on the, the, the functionality of your calculator and using that fraction capacity when you can. All right. I borrowed five grand at 8%. I paid 5,550 back. How long am I gonna borrow the money for in tenths of years? All right, so. What did I give you in this problem this time? I'm in CFC MV or maturity value. All right, good. The maturity value is the 5550. The principal is the 5000 and the rate's the 8%. Note, folks, 5550 is not the interest. It's how much I paid back, right? When you pay back a loan, that's the principal and the interest. So theoretically, folks, how would I calculate the interest in this problem? Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with doing that, but just make sure you don't tell me that the interest is the 55-50, okay? That tends to be the student mistake when this problem rolls around, all right? Now, I'm asking for years, or I'm asking for time, so what formula am I going to use? R. And again, my interest is that 550. Principal of 5,000. Rate. Following my own rules, 0 0.08. And so what does this fit back at you? One point four? Yeah. Straight up? Well, round it. Well, okay, give me some more no, no. decimals. You said round in tenths of years. I agree, but give me the whole thing so we can round it. Can't. 1.375. 1.375. Again, don't leave the answer like that, which you guys were doing. Thank you very much. 1.4 years. All right. So again, and please, 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 pretty please, do not tell me that this is one year and four months. It's not, right? Because four tenths is not four months, right? Because remember, there are 12 months in a year, not 10, right? So this is nowhere near one year and four months. 1.4 years, just leave it right like that. All right? If 
I borrowed 75 grand at four and a quarter percent interest for 82 days, how much interest did I accrue? This is a great straightforward I equals PRT. Just be careful, make sure you convert all of the numbers correctly. 75,000 times the 0 0.0425. Again, be careful with that percentage conversion. And then 82 days. And since I didn't say ordinary, use 365. And that's a straight multiplication. And sorry, what did you say it was? 716. 10 cents? Is everybody happy with that number? Awesome. All right. Yeah. How does that if we don't like break out principal rate, whatever? Are we going to get points back? No. But if you get the wrong answer, so if you wrote down here $716.08 and I don't see any information floating around up here, I probably only give you like three or four points. If I see all the information up here and I see that all you did was, oops, you, you rounded incorrectly, or you accidentally wrote 81 even though the problem said 82, then I can give you eight or nine points. But, you know, it, so it's purely up to you as to whether or not you potentially want to get more, ex, more partial credit or not. I don't, you don't need to show me any of your work ever, folks, right? All I need is an answer. And if it's the right one, you get all the points. If it's the wrong one, then then if you show work, I can give you partial credit. If you don't, then I, I can't do much, all right? So, just be aware. Oh, yeah, this is the best one, right? Oh, no, these are fun, right? Yeah, but you just got to be careful, right? As long as you're walking through the problem carefully, you won't make any mistakes, and it'll be fun. All right. So how do we deal with loans where we make a couple of payments in between the actual loan due dates? One payment at a time. One payment at a time. Awesome. Okay. So, so when do we make our first payment? 50th, 50th day. All right. So we pay $10,000 on 50th day. What does that payment do first? Pays interest. How do we calculate interest again? <laughs> Good old I equals PRT. Make sure you go back to P and do not use the 10,000, right? This is again one of those sort of student mistakes where when you, you sort of get stuck on this number of 10,000, you're like, oh, that's what I should use to calculate the interest. Don't make that mistake, right? 50,000 bucks, what was my interest rate? 0 0.08. And how much time? 50, 50. And it, since it did say ordinary, use the 360, not the 365. Okay? So look for that phrase, ordinary, somewhere so that you know to use 360 instead of 365. Alright? So, how much interest? 550 up, $55.56. A whole bunch of fives, I assume. What do I do with that number? Yeah, because remember, your payment pays that first, right? So, a bunch of fours. That's how much you actually paid. Pull that from the 50000 All right. So this creates your new principal. $40,555.56. And again, folks, remember, every time you make a payment, the loan starts over because you've now paid the first 50 days of interest. You don't have to pay the first 50 days again ever for the life of this loan. Now you start paying on the 51st day with this new principal, almost $10,000 less. So again, as you said, everything is driven off of payments. When do I pay the next time? Pay 
$10,000 on the 120th day. What's that $10,000 going to do first? Pay the interest, right? Again, this is the whole idea that this is a, a kind of a repetitive process. As long as you're careful, you won't make any mistakes, right? So calculate your interest. Just make sure you use your new principal. That's why you calculate it, right? Don't forget your rate and time. It's still I equals PRT. We're still at 8%. And how much time goes by to the 120th day? All right, good. Again, remember, we already paid the first 50 days of interest. We don't have to pay those first 50 again. So from the 50th day to the 120th day is only 70 days worth of interest. So how much interest the second time around? 63086. Right. What do I do with the 63086? Again, remember your payment pays that first. So take your next $10,000 payment, subtract 63086. So we're down to 936914 is how much we actually paid after we pay the interest. And this is going to create our new, new principal. Yeah. I'll give you lots more space on the actual test. Forty thousand five fifty five fifty six minus the nine thousand three hundred sixty nine dollars and fourteen cents. What are we down to now? Six forty two. Almost home, folks. What, what's our last payment? Payoff loan on 200th day. Note, folks, you owe the 31,186.42 plus the interest that you would generate for the last 80 days of the loan, right? So you have one more interest calculation to generate. Again, use the new, new principle. 31,186.42. Times your 0.08, and how many days this time? 80. And again, because this is from the 200th day, from the 120th day, how much interest on our last payment? 554.43. And what do I do with that number? Add it to the principal because this is extra interest that you owe. So you're going to have to add that to the payment to figure out how much you pay on that last pay date. So final pay, 31,000, what is that? 745. These just take a little bit of fortitude and a little bit of patience, right? You gotta be able to buck up and handle the fact that you're gonna do the same thing a couple of times over and over again. And as long as you don't screw it up along the way, you should be fine. And again, this is another one of those where showing your work, really a good idea, right? Because it's 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 real easy on one of these to accidentally, as you're punching in the calculator, to flip one of the numbers, right? And if you've got all this stuff written down. If you flip one of the numbers accidentally, I'll be able to see that you did that. And I'll be able to say, oh, you did everything right, but you flipped one of the numbers, so you wound up 30 or 20 or 60 cents off. 
And then your answer is wrong at the bottom by 75 cents or so. If you show me all the work, I can give you eight or nine points. If I don't see any of the work and you're 60 cents off, I don't know what you did wrong, and all I can say is you're wrong. Okay, so these ones definitely. I mean, again, you don't have to, but strongly advise showing me what you did. All right, and then last but not least, how much do we save? How do we figure out how much we saved? Add up all the interest you paid and compare it to? Yeah, how much interest you paid in one shot, right. So, one payment interest. How do I calculate that? 50,000 times 0.08 times 200 over 360. So we make no payments. This 50,000 never goes down for straight 200 days. How much interest would I have generated? $2,222.22. That sound right? Bunch of deuces? Yeah. Sounds right to me because we've got a nine down here, so it's going to be a repeating number. So you would have paid 22, 22, 22. Two's being wild, of course. Huh. Come on, this could be a poker game, you never know. Then all you have to do is go back to your problem and say, hey, just find all of my interest payments that I made. 554.43. Six thirty eighty six five fifty five fifty six and add all those buggers up five fifty five fifty six plus what was that next one? Six thirty eighty six and the last one was five fifty four forty three. What it wind up costing me in interest? 1748 five. And five cents? Yeah, 85. 80. 85. Okay. 1748 and 85 cents. Ah, there you go. Say that and carefully. 1748 and. You just It's distinctly possible. <laughs> Or you mumble, because you're old. Hey, darn old. Oh, what are we doing? <laughs> hey. Sorry, just kidding, Greg. No. All right. No, and so how, do we, how, much, how much money did we save then? Subtract, right? Minus 1740.85. How much money did we save? 41 and 37 cents. 481. I'll buy it. So we saved $481.37 just by making two $10,000 payments early on our $50,000 loan. Almost 500 bucks. Definitely not the sort of thing that you're going to sneeze at, right? I can guarantee you folks that there will be a question like this on the test, okay? Except I can almost guarantee you that I will give you dates and not number of days. <laughs> So you will have to calculate the number of days between the dates, okay? I mean, why not? Yeah, I mean it's one of those where you got to you got to show me that you know how to calculate the difference between the, the between two dates, anyways. And this is just my way of making sure that you can. All right. All right. So last problem: the payday loan shop business problem. This is actually a problem that uh, is, is actually based off of a true story that I got from one of my students who said that she used to use payday loan shops. When we first started talking about it, I, I was telling people that the average interest rate that a payday loan shop charges is somewhere between 300 and 500%. Right? And, and my student looked at me and said, oh, no, they don't. Mine just charged me 10%. And I was like, 10%? And this was the problem that she was given, right? 
She borrowed four hundred. Fourteen days later, she had to pay four hundred and forty dollars. And they told her she's paying ten percent of what she borrowed as interest. And if you think about it, right? What's ten percent of four hundred dollars? Forty dollars. How much interest did she pay? Forty dollars. So, so her interest rate is ten percent, right? Welcome to how well we as Americans understand percentages. Ten percent for quarterly <laughs> So let's figure out what she was really paying. And then after she figured out, she was like, "Oh, like yeah, should have just used your credit card." But anyways, all right. So what did I give you in this problem? Principal, time, and technically I didn't give you interest, I gave you maturity value, right? So you can calculate the interest, just be careful with that, right? And did I say that this was ordinary? Nope. So, how many years did she borrow that money? Fourteen three hundred sixty-five years. And I'm trying to find the rate again. Don't forget to tell me that the interest is the four forty minus the four hundred, so it's forty dollars. Please be careful with that. So, how do I calculate rate again? I over PT, what's my I? 40 bucks. What's my P? 400. What's my T? 14 ths Payday loan shop. Uh, again, remember this is the decimal representation of the rate, right? So what do I have to do to make this a percent? Multiply by 100. Move the decimal two to the right. The interest rate that we were really paying, 260.71 percent interest, which is actually pretty good for a payday loan shop. It's okay. I would guess that the average payday loan shop would probably make you pay like fifty or sixty dollars to borrow that four hundred bucks for two weeks. Be a little bit more reasonable for them. And again, the reason why that these payday loan shops do this, of course, is that one, they can. <laughs> no one regulates them. That is one of the least regulated businesses out there, and they lobby very hard with the government to make sure that it's not regulated in any way, shape, or form. And, well, if you're desperate, folks, you got to do what you got to do, right? Mm -hmm. If you need $400 to fix your car, and the car repair shop says, I need the cash now because I don't trust your credit, then what do you got to do? you got to drive to get to work, so you do what you got to do, right? So, I mean, these places, they do provide a service. They just... Sort of take you to the cleaners while they're doing it, if they can. All right. And the worst thing about these payday loan shops, of course, is that when you can't pay them back in 14 days, well, you're in a cycle of hell, man. Because they just start hitting you with fees, hitting you with extra, you know, charges, and invariably you've got something written up as collateral against this loan, and it doesn't take them long to finally decide. Well, really, this is car is your collateral for this? As soon as, they, as soon as the loan reaches the value of your car, they, they'll repo. <clears throat> like that. It doesn't take them long either, because they're used to doing it. So again, if you if ever use these sorts of things, it, it, you know, it's sometimes necessary, but just make sure you get out of it. That's the biggest thing I would say when dealing with this kind of a loan. All right? All right, so that's chapter 10. How about questions on the chapter 10 homework? A 
Okay? nicer number if you use 2 over 52. If you try to use 14 out of 365, the number sucks. I like it. But can you still get the same number? No, you won't. No. No. So what's the answer to this? <laughs> How much do we borrow again? Hundred. Hundred. $100. How much interest did we pay? Fifteen. Two weeks. We're trying to figure out the rate, right? You can use 126, can't you? Round it down. What do you mean? Round the 2 to 52 to make it easier. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Okay, one, that's two, what I meant. Oh, yeah, yeah, so absolutely. If you want to simplify the fraction, I do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. I'm not going to complain about people who simplify fractions, right? It won't make a difference which one you use, obviously. But. And when you punch that out, what do you get? It's like 3.9 or something like that? Yeah. 3.91. Is it 3.91? No, 3.9, you're right. Yeah, it's exactly 3.9, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's, again, remember, that's the decibel. Do not tell me it's 3.9%. That's the one that drives me insane, right? Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, it's, because it's not the same fraction, right? I mean, it's, it's a little bit off, right? I mean, it's close, but it's just not. If they give you a time in a certain number of units, never convert it to other units, right? So if they tell you it's 30 days, don't say that, well, 30 days is just a month, therefore I can use months, right? No, right? If they gave you 30 days, use 30 days out of whether it's 360 or 365, whichever one, okay? So just be careful with that one, because that is a relatively nitpicky thing, and we kind of think, well, you know, two days is for two weeks is fourteen days. Why can't we convert it? And and this is why. Okay, so just be careful. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Okay. Um, the bookkeeper for Keystone Company forgot to send the. On April 5th. Okay, well, hang on. Do 415, okay? She sent the payment November 8th. Ooh, sent November 8th, okay? The IRS sent her a penalty charge of 8% simple interest on the unpaid taxes of 4100 8% simple on $4,100, okay? And then just calculate the penalty. Find the penalty. Exact interest. What does that mean? 365. 365 days. Okay, good. So technically you should have paid your taxes on April 15th, but if you wait until November 8th to pay them, the government will ding you. I had a year, one year, where folks, where I paid my taxes and the check never cleared. And I was like, I was freaking out because I had it in my checkbook that I said I paid, you know, like $528 or whatever on taxes. And Four or five months went by, and still the government hadn't cashed my check. And, and about six months after I, you know, you know, similar sort of thing, it was October, November, my bank calls me up and says, Mr. Munt, we have a question. There's a service here that's trying to cash a check that is more than six months old, and we're wondering if, if, you, if you will allow this to happen. And I'm like, oh, really? Wow, who's the check to? The Internal Revenue Service. I was like, oh, the IRS lost my check? And they're like, yes. You could deny payment to them if you wish. <laughs> I was like, is that a good idea? <laughs> and the response from the guy was, he, he, he couldn't help me. He started laughing out loud. He said, probably not. <laughs> and so I said, yeah, okay, go ahead and allow it. And so they, they didn't charge me any penalties, which was, I guess, nice because it was their fault. But in theory, I mean, if, if the government wanted to be a dick about it, right, 
They were like, well, you didn't give it to us. It was the Postal Service, which is a different branch of government. Therefore, they, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's like, anyways, they were all nice about it. But it was just weird because I kept, you know, I mean, I did. I, I actually was looking at my checking account going, why do I have, you know, an extra $500 in my balance when I know I paid my taxes? Weird stuff does happen. Okay, so I'm looking for the penalty. Penalty, of course, equals interest. How do we calculate interest, folks? We partied. That's absolutely right. So, how much did we borrow, or how much did we owe? Forty-one hundred. Forty-one hundred. Eight percent. How many days between April fifteenth and November eighth? Look them up, folks. Get out your calendar. What's April fifteenth? One oh five. One oh five. What's November eighth? Three twelve. Three twelve. How are you going to figure out how many days between those? Why can we just subtract them? Because they're in the same year. Because they're in the same year. If the dates are in the same year, just subtract the two numbers, right? Because you're, you're basically going from the 105th day to the 312th day. The number of days between those two is exactly the difference, right? So 312 minus 105. Two two oh seven over three sixty five. And so what did we wind up paying? One eighty six pennies. Again, so when it, the dates are in the same year, just subtract. If they're across separate years, then you have to do the whole three sixty minus and all that other. You know, jazz to calculate the number of days in two years added together. All right? All right. One more. So you don't have to do the whole problem. I just had a question on 14. Uh, how do you write out the time? It's like a bunch of differences, but it's over like the span of two years. Okay. So. You should have three years worth of days. Well, it's 422 days, but would you yeah. put that over 360? Yeah, uh -huh. if it's ordinary, yeah. Oh. Yeah, if, if the number of days is more than a year, then yeah, just put it. It doesn't make a difference. I'm sure if you can have more <coughs> days then, or if you have to switch it to like months or something. Nope, nope. I have a question 30. 30? All right, which one's number 30? 30, you're borrowing uh, $17,000. Borrow $17,000. Okay. Uh, 120 days uh, on a 120 day. 120 day, 12%. Uh, 12%? Nope. After 65 days, you're paying $2,000. Pay $2,000 on the 65th day. Okay. On the 89th day. You're paying four thousand dollars. Pay four thousand on the 89th day. What's the final balance due? Uh, determine interest rate. Ending balance due. Uh, you use ordinary interest. Ooh. Ordinary. And so, find final pay and interest pay. Right. All right, so how do we do this? Same thing we did just a little bit ago, right? Just take your time. Be careful. Again, remember that everything is driven off of the payments. So pay 2000 on day 65, right? What's the $2,000 going to pay first? Interest. What did we borrow? 17,000? 17,000 times your rate. 0. 0.12. Again, make sure you don't screw that one up. And how many, how much time? 65 days. Note 360 days in the year because it's ordinary. So, how much 
how much interest the first 65 days? Three sixty-eight thirty-three. Looks like about right. One six half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. What do I do with that three sixty-eight thirty-three? Take it away from your payment, right? Two thousand minus three sixty-eight thirty-three. Sixteen thirty-one sixty-seven. What do you do with your 1631.67? Take it off your principal to generate your new principal and then reset your loan, right? <coughs> so my new principal is the 17,000 minus 1631.67. 15,368 First payment. Now move to the second one. Pay four thousand on eighty ninth day. Again, what are we going to pay first? Well, I mean interest. Interest. Again, just make sure on the new interest on the interest you use the new principal to calculate it because the loan reset. Fifteen thousand. 368.33. Don't forget the interest rate in there. And how many days did we borrow it? 24 from the 89th to the 65th day. What did that wind up being? Twenty-two ninety-five. Is that what other people got? Yeah. All right. Awesome. What am I gonna do with one twenty-two ninety-five? Take that off the four thousand dollar payment, right? So instead of paying four thousand, we only pay three thousand eight hundred seventy-seven dollars and five cents. And that's what you subtract off the principal. Make sure you take that off of the new principal, right? So that we're generating our new, new principal. So 15,368.33 minus 38.7705. Yucky number. What's that wind up being? That gets us through our two early payments. So now all we have to do is get our final payment amount. Final payment on 120 day. Again, that's how much we owe. We just need to add the interest. Again, PRT, use the new, new P. Not forget the interest rate. And again, 120 minus 89, 31 days. Oops, it's ordinary. Again, 120 minus 89 to get you to 31. And what's our interest on our last payment? 1874. So everybody else got? And so what do we make our final payment amount for? Add 10.02. So that's what our final payment amount is. What was our total interest payments? One 
1874 plus the 12295 plus the 36833. And nicely enough, that number turns out to be exactly 61002, which, if you notice, happens to be the amount extra that you paid on the loan, right? You made a $2,000 payment, a $4,000 payment, and $11,610.02. How much more than $17,000 did you pay? The $610.02. That had better be your interest, right? So it kind of makes sense that those two numbers look the same. All right? Fun problem. Those are always good. Oh, come on, you guys, we've done three or four of them by now, you guys, they're old hat, right? No problem when it comes to test time, right? Probably. Okay, good. All right, if you are done with your chapter set, 10 homework and would like to turn it in, I would love to have it. If you need the extra time, you are more than welcome to wait until Tuesday, that's okay. Can you uh, jump back to question 34? That's too bad. Question 34? Good, chapter 10? All right. So, new stuff. All right, so chapter 12 and chapter 13 are really the, the, the best two chapters of this class, folks. Because these two chapters are all about earning interest on your money, about getting money for free, okay? Anytime you can get money for free, that's the kind of stuff we want to get, right? So, we start in chapter 12, dealing with good old compound interest. All right. Now, if someone asked you to, to describe compound interest... How would you, how'd you tell them, what would you say? What would be your response? Well, if you will, folks, what you should do, if you're ever in like one of those elevator conversation sorts of things, right? And someone's talking about compound interest, you can sound witty, and all you have to say is this. That's what compound interest is, is interest on your interest. Which is cool, because it's nice and short, it's catchy, right? Because it's not even a real complete sentence, it's actually a run-on, but that's okay, right? If you want the official definition, right, here's a more mathematically you know, rigorous definition for compound interest, right? It's the process of Computing interest during each investment period adding that interest to the principal Then repeating the process for every period. That is what a Webster's Dictionary would say, or probably more likely a, a business banking book would say, on how you go about calculating compound interest. Process of computing interest during each investment period, adding that interest to the principal, and then repeating the process for every period. And you must say that in the snootiest tone possible, so that you sound as snooty as the sentence sounds in and of itself. Okay? So, whatever. Um, the idea, though, is calculating your interest on your interest. 
Okay? So what does that mean? And usually, folks, it's best to just do an exam. All right? Best learned by doing an exam. Okay, so let's invest some money, okay? So I'm going to invest $10,000 at 6% compounded annually interest for four years. So for whatever reason you've got ten thousand bucks laying around that you you maybe you you know maybe one of your you know long lost uncle that you didn't know passed away and he left ten thousand dollars to every one of his nephews and you're like sweet you didn't know this guy but all of a sudden you've got ten grand right and you know yourself right if you take that ten grand and just put it in your checking account or your bank account what are you gonna do with it yeah I mean you know you're gonna do it right I mean that. There's no way you can stop yourself. And I'm probably the same way. If I see $10,000 in my account, I'm just like, eggs. Right? No matter what you walk by, you're like, can I buy myself a coffee this morning? Well, of course I can. I've got $10,000 in my account. I can afford it. No problem, right? And of course, what do you do after about a month or two of having $10,000 in your account? Yeah. You, you piss it all away, right? So, advice from the wise. When you get that $10,000 windfall, for whatever reason, invest it somewhere where you can't touch it. Okay? This is how you do it. Right? You find an investment that's going to pay you a certain interest rate that's compounded over a certain amount of time and crank it out. All right. So, how are we going to do this, folks? The process of computing interest during each period. Okay, so the first thing you have to do when you're doing compound interest, folks, is say, what is the period of this investment? Four years. Now that's how long I'm going to invest it. One year. One year. Why one year? Annually. Annually. Okay. So this phrase, whatever phrase comes after the word compounded, is always going to be the period of your investment. Okay? Right now we're compounding it annually. We could compound it monthly. We could compound it quarterly. We could compound it semi-annually. We could even compound it daily, potentially. Okay? We're going to start with the easiest one, though, because annually is, is nice. One year is a good, nice round number. Okay? So, we need to rinse and repeat this process for every period. How many periods are in this investment? Four, because <laughs> there are four years. Okay, so the key to this problem, folks, is that you need to break it up into its four period components. And the cool thing about it, folks, is that compound interest, it makes it sound like it's, it's, it's new, it's fancy, and it's different. Inside of each period, folks, the interest is Compound interest is just simple interest happening multiple times, okay? And that's kind of the core of almost all of the fancy banking that you see going on out there in the world, folks. Mortgages, all of the interest, simple interest. Car loans, all of the interest, simple interest. Investments, 401ks, all of the interest, simple interest. Everything is actually based on simple interest. It's just being done multiple times over multiple periods, okay? And it forces things to get complicated. But the nice part about it is that if you want, and you can, break it down into each period, you can do it. Because it's all I equals P R T, okay? So, we need to figure out in period one how much interest we have. So, let's start with the important information, P, R, and T. How much money did I invest into this account? 10,000 bucks. What's the interest rate I'm getting paid? 
6%, put it in its decimal. And now remember, what's a period in this investment? One year. So my time in the first period is one year. So if I have $10,000 at 6% for one year, how much interest do I get? 600 bucks, I equals PRT, right? So all of this compound interest crap stuff, stuff folks, it sounds complicated, it's not. It's just simple lots of times over, okay? 10,000 times 0 0.06 times one, $600. And now what do we do with that $600? Add that interest to the principal and then repeat for the next period. So take that $600, add it to the principal. What's my principal for the next year? The new P, right? $10,600. How much, what's my interest rate for that year? Rate never changes. How much time goes by? It's always one year. It is the second year, folks, but we already did the first year, so it's just one year. And now, how much interest do I earn in the second period? $636. How come it wasn't 600 folks? Because our principal change, and where did that $36 come from? It's interest on your interest. That's how compound interest works, right? So the $10,000 is going to earn us 600 bucks every month. The interest will keep building on top of it because you keep earning interest on your interest. And the next year, we're going to earn interest on our interest on our interest. And hence it grows and grows and grows. So, what do I do with that 636 bucks? Add it back to the principal. What's my principal for the next year? $11,236. What's my rate and time, folks? Same thing. That's the nice part about these compound interest calculations, folks. The rate and time will always stay the same. Please note that if either of those things change, you have to stop and start the problem over. Okay? Once the rate or time changes in any of those things, it's a new problem, right? So what's 11,236 times 0.06 times 1? 674.16. Again, is it 61 or 16? I'm sorry. 16. 16? Okay. What do I do with the 674.16? Add it to the principal. Eleven thousand. What is that? Nine hundred something. Nine, ten, sixteen. What's the rate and time? Nothing changes, right? The rate and time does not change. The only thing that's going to change is your principal in this problem. One more time, folks. What's the interest? Fourteen. Seven, fourteen, sixty-one. And one last time, add that back to your principal. What's our final amount in our account? $12,624.77. cents. That's how compound interest works, folks. It's just this process, rinse and repeat, over and over and over again. And the cool part about this is that you've already gotten prepped for this because the problems we were doing back in Chapter 10 that were a pain in the butt, right? Very similar, right? Except those we were paying off the loan. Here, we are earning 
on our investment, but the process is basically the same concept. Except that, for these problems, a little bit easier because our time in between each calculation always has to be the same. When we're paying off that loan, eh, you know, it could be 20 days, it could be 60 days, it could be 90 days, etc. Here, fixed. All right. All right. Now, question to you. How much interest did I earn? How did you get that number so fast, Rhea? You added all of these up? Seriously? Did you actually add them all up? No. I did this. I have this done before. Okay. You guys did this. But how could have you done that faster? Just minus 10,000, obviously. Minus 10,000, right? This is how much money you have at the end of the investment. How much did you put into it? 10 grand. What's the difference between how much you invest and how much you take out? Interest, right? So note, there is all, you can add the interest up. That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But the easy way to do it is to just subtract. $2,624.77. So the, the concept that we were working with before, folks, the future value that we're getting here is this $12,624.77. My principal, how much I invested initially, 10,000 bucks. So that stuff we learned in chapter 10, that carries all the way through chapter 13. Okay? So principal minus, or future minus principal, that's always going to give us our interest. All right? Which is nice, right? Because that makes sense when you're dealing with investments or loaning or, in, or borrowing, right? If you start with a certain amount and you get to the future amount, the difference between those two had better be your interest. All right. Not bad? How are we doing time on? I think we're done. All right, well. I usually, well, okay, so next class I will do another example, folks, of going through the process the long way. Note, folks, this is the long way. What we are going to do next class is use the business math handbook to learn how to do this in one step instead of having to do all of these calculations, right? Imagine if this problem had been, instead of for four years, for 20 Yeah, there would be 20 calculations we would have to do. It would be a long, pain in the ass problem. When you use the table, folks, it's one step. Okay? So, our goal for next class is do one exact problem and then start learning how to use the table. All right? So, definitely next class, make sure you bring your tables back to class because we're going to use them. And if you don't have one, again, you can always borrow one that's here and we'll work off of that. In a row, folks. Again, I have that stuff posted as a PDF on, on Blackboard if you want to print it out yourself. And I do think I have copies somewhere. You can ask the front desk and see if they have any. If not, tell them. Someone shoot me an email, and I'll send an email to the front desk and tell them to make a few copies for you. Okay? Are you going to be here next week or over there? I, I was planning on going over there next week. Okay. What? Was planning? Or are planning? I, I am planning to go over to Monroe for next Tuesday, but that will depend on other issues for me. So my wife's out of town until Got it. Wednesday, so if something. Oh, so you can't ask her for permission, so he just has to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I do what I'm told. I'm a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, actually, I think that's true. I bet you do do what your wife tells you. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs>